Right, so firstly, just having a look at what the thermostat's doing. So currently that's saying heating's off at the moment, but obviously there's demand for heat on this, but there's no heat demand on here because the flame symbol there is not lit up. So let's see where we're getting power from on the thermostat controls because that will tell us what's what. Well, we know we're going to be getting power at both of them. So, yeah, got 230 there and 230 there. So we need to find out. Let's take this off now. First job today, got a pot and gold uh, up in the loft. I've been to this one before. I don't think I've recorded it for YouTube. I basically just had to change a diverter, actuator motor. It was faulty. Didn't do no wet work on it. This was a couple of weeks ago. And I had a message from the property management company that look after this house, saying that the pressure had been dropping the last few days. Obviously nothing to do with me, but I've come here to investigate. I'm guessing PRV most likely. But we never know. So the boiler looked clean as a whistle when I saw it last time. So let's see what's going on. Right, let's have a look. Luckily, the way they've done this PRV, popped one of these on there. So I should be able to see if there's any water in here by undoing this compression elbow. I don't know why that's so tight. Yeah, wet. There we go. That's the reason why the pressure's dropping. So let's get this case off and see what type of PRV is because there's two types. You've got the big head and the small head. I've got both of them on me. So let's see which one it is. Okay, so we've got the big head PRV. So I've got one on the van. So we'll get that swapped out. Check the vessel as well. It's not split, but get that recharge at the same time as well. So let's get this done. Okay, boilers been drained out. Expansion vessel been recharged. So that sounds a lot better now. I'm literally just gonna wind the head out of there and swap it out. So got the new one here. Let's get the head out of there, grease it up, get this one out, swap it over, job done. Right, boiler is done. Uh, don't drop them screws, but yeah, back up to pressure there. Just fired it up on um, low rate on service mode just to get rid of any air because obviously the boiler is the highest point in the loft. Just want to make sure the heat exchanger doesn't get chopped up with air. And there you go. I always just write a little note on the boiler case so that normally it's me who comes back to the boilers that I've repaired, but just in case if it is someone else, at least they can see what I've done on there. Uh, without having to go through notes and stuff like that so that's done let's go into the next one okay so in this job i've got to change a pair of rad valves so first thing we're going to do i've got a combi boiler here i'm just going to drain the pressure out the boiler and then lock off the flow and returns so that stops the aav from doing anything and then i should be able to semi snatch them rad valves without having to drain the whole system out so let's get this done first oh little tip 
So some of the CDIs, they come with the drain, the drain off, there's a hose connected to the condens. This one hasn't, so all I've done is I've just popped the condens hose off of the trap, put my hose on there, and then I'll just pop the hose into here. So that will drain just straight out into the condens. So I'm got to worry about bringing any drain down gear in here. Right, lock shield, TRV, TRV, lock shield. Let's get these swapped out now. Just not, these have got the three quarter inch connections on there, so you can't use a standard 15 mil lock shield unless you change the tail, which I'm not going to be doing. So I've got myself a three quarter inch lock shield for this side, and I've got standard 15 mil TRV for there. So pressure's off, let's get this done first. Right, they're both done. That literally, I just looked back at how long the time lapse was recording for. Four minutes, 43 seconds. If you know what you're doing, you can get it done quick. Ain't got to worry about draining down the whole system. There's ways you can do the same job, but quicker and efficiently as you gain more experience. I don't drain the whole system. I dump the pressure from the boiler, isolate the flow and returns, creates a vacuum on the system. So unless there's another leak somewhere on the system, that then allows me to quickly chain them over without too much water coming out. So that's done. And also these velocity mats are wicked, especially when you've got cream carpets. Just keeps it all nice and protected, they're waterproof. So now let's go and put some pressure in the boiler and then fire it up and just test that, make sure this is all getting nice and hot. All right, this next job, it's one of mine and a colleague of mine's streets ahead, Mr. Allen. We swapped this out a couple of years ago. There was a Turbo Max 637 here. So we just replaced it with an Ecotec Plus 637. So luckily, one thing I was a bit concerned about last time was that would we have to break out the flue, but we didn't. The flue hole lined up from the rear because obviously on the Turbo Max, the vessel is at the back of the boiler. So I wasn't sure if that's gonna throw the flue out or not, but it didn't. So that's all good. Down here, let's pop these out of the way. I don't want to get blamed for breaking anything there. So we'll get this out. And obviously you can see we've got two, uh, the Spirotech Duo. So we've got the deaerator and we've got the magnetic filter there as well. Uh, Condense is running straight into the kitchen waste there. Gas test point is there as well. The Previous installers have actually done a really good job on this one because there's a 28 mil gas run here already from before. And they also, the airing cupboard upstairs, everything's lever valve labeled, the, the works. So yeah, they've done a really good job previously. So for me, it's just gonna be bread and butter stuff, standard service, 26 nine checks, and hopefully we should be out of here momentarily. So visually, all looks Spick and span inside. Uh, right, now there was about 18 radiators on this system and even when we power flushed it, the system was nice and clean. So let's see what it's like now. A little bit of dirt, but that is literally it. So yeah, not bad. Condense trap doesn't even need taking out because that is clean as you like. So yeah, this should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna recharge the expansion vessel um, and then do my 26 nine checks. All right, next job, it's a new install. We've got a main called Compact Combi, and there's a hive, but it's a twin channel hive here. So we need to try and see how we can get this rewired because customers saying it's not been working properly with the heating coming on and off sporadically and things like that. So I'm gonna have a look at how it's been wired in here. Apparently the installer wasn't confident with the wiring. So let's see, we've got five core coming in here. We've got a black and a gray in the thermostat controls, which is fine. So that link's been removed. So now let's just trace this cable back to here and see how that's been widened because it's going to be different to a standard a standard single channel one. 
Right, so firstly, just having a look at what the thermostat's doing. So currently that's saying heating's off at the moment, but obviously there's demand for heat on there, but there's no heat demand on here because the flame symbol there is not lit up. So let's see where we're getting power from on the thermostat controls because that will tell us what's what. Well, we know we're going to be getting power at both of them. So, yep, yeah, got 230 there and 230 there. So we need to find out. Let's take this off now. So yeah, in here, that's in number one. So remember, it's a twin channel programmer. So on this one, number one is corresponding to a wire plan system with hot water off. So that's why that's sending a constant 240 down to here, which is probably why the boiler's got constant demand because it thinks hot water is off. So when hot water is off, it sends 240. That's meant to send 240 down the grate if you had a three port valve. And that's what would hold the three port valve in the hot water off position. So right now that's sending constant power to the thermostat, which is telling the boiler to fire up for heating, even though we've got heating off here. So we need to rewire this twin channel to make it work as a single channel and then make sure. So on these, you're going to have, I can't remember which is which, I'll find out in a minute. One of them, I believe it's the bottom one, is 240 out, and the top one is your switch live back in. So we need to get rid of the 240 out because we don't need that on here, and we just need number four, which is our heating on. So this is not even wired into the heating controls at all. Got It's wired into hot water on, and hot water off, and hot water on. There's nothing in the heating on terminal. So that's where we need to move the wires around and make some adjustments here as well. So we can make this twin channel work as a single channel. Okay, so I've had the power off and I've put the power back on again. So I wanna test out these two terminals. Remember I was saying one of them is switch live out and the other one is your, sorry, 240 out and the other one is your switch live back in. I believe the bottom one is 240 out. Yeah. And the top one is your switch live back. So that's dead. Now these are the two wires that I've taken out of there which are coming from the hive. So right now, they're both probably going to be giving me 240. No, black one isn't. Grey one isn't. I think that's because the receiver... Yeah, it's because I've taken the receiver box off of the off of the back plate. So obviously it's not going to be sending any, any power now. But that's fine. We know what's what in the receiver. So let's make the adjustments in there and wire this back in properly and get to work. Okay, so I've wired the gray into our switch live back to the boiler. And then on the back plate here, I've removed the black and the gray. So remember the gray was in number three, I think it was. So I've just moved that over to number four. So that's now gonna work with heating on. So let's close this back up. Let's put the receiver. There. Power on. Right, that's going to be flashing. It's going to try and sync up with this. So I let it all pair up, and then we'll test the heating on and off. Well, good thing is, firstly, that's not flashing, so it means that's killed the demand. I think that's paired up already. Is it receiving? I think it's going to take a minute or so for that to repair up again. No signal. Why is that? All right, let me get this hooked up again and then we'll test it. All right, so looks like it's working now. So choose function. Let's get back to it. All right, heating, manual, manual mode. Okay. So now let's turn the thermostat up to, let's say, 25. That should click on there. There we go. We should get, yes, heating symbols flashing. 
we should get flame in a minute obviously it's not going to because that is turning up right there we go diverters marking over let's wait for the fan to kick in yeah, the temperature's dropping there we go fans come on and we have ignition so the flame symbol's on, temperature's starting to rise. Cool, right, now let's turn it down. So we've got flame symbol on there, flame symbol on there, flame symbol on there. Heating's on, now let's turn that target temperature down to, let's just put it down to 20, because it's reading. There we go, that's gone off straight away. Demand's gone, job done. That's how you set up a twin channel to work as a single channel. Just got to move a couple of wires around and it does the same thing. 